Go. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, listen, I've noticed that there's still some conversation or some reference to 5D that's not really, uh, it's not really accurate. So I've tried to explain this several times in videos, but I don't think people are understanding them completely. So, Inca, don't play with the bird. Hey, stop, please. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do it with visual aids, okay? So let's let's get right into it. Okay, so first of all, I've talked about this creation, and I've talked about how that everybody has created things like this creation, and by this creation, I mean all of it, and I'll get into that in a minute, but it's all of everything. So the creator was an entity, just like the entity that you are that's inhabiting this human body, and just like you have. He went over into what we would call the void. Remember that in reality, there is no such thing as time and space. Everything is all together one as one. But there is an area that is all things and nothing that I would call kind of the void. So what, what I would, the best way to describe it is we go to the void. And when we're getting ready to create some magnificent creation, and we come up with our idea, and then we start the creation. So the creator came, and he went to the void, and he said, okay, uh, I'm going to divide the void into light and dark, good and bad, higher and lower vibrations per se, even though that's kind of iffy to explain it that way as well. Mm -hmm. And then he fractaled all of this down, 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 eventually going to Earth, where humans were put into, or creator gods were put into human bodies where they could experience not remembering that they were creator gods in the lowest vibrations possible, what you would consider negative vibrations, okay? So I've got a picture here, and this, I want you to think of all of these dots, all these dots of, is our different creations, like all of this creation that you can think of that is where you are now. Earth, solar systems, universes, multidimensional, um, all these different timelines, all these different aspects are all in one creation. Okay, All these other dots are different kinds of creations. Okay, So this dot right here, I blew up, and this is everything that you can know, think of, dream of, of being this creation. Within this are 3D, 4D, and 5D. Okay, within this is 3D, 4D, 5D, and beyond, and below. Okay, all of these other creations out here are outside, completely separate, per se, of this creation that you are now a part of in human form. So when I talk about star seeds coming from outside this creation, and let's say you're from a place that you would identify vibrationally as home, I'm not talking about you coming from anywhere inside of here. I'm talking about you coming from these other creations. And as I've said before, all the star seeds that are on this planet were recruited because you are experts in your field of expertise, okay? That expertise can't always be explained in human terms because the human terms within this creation down to 3D, 4D duality in amnesia with limited uh, ability to communicate vibrationally, only being able to really uh, communicate effectively verbally with very few human words. It is almost impossible to describe to you guys these other creations. It is hard enough trying to describe what else is involved within this creation in human terms. 
So when a star seed asks me, where am I from? Where's my home? I'm talking about these places out here. And because all of you are experts in your field, the chances that you will come here from your the place you the most like to hang out in your expertise, the chances of you finding someone here that, that has also been hanging around with you out here is very, very, very slim. Now remember that all these dots go on to infinity, all different directions out in all the way around. The amount of beings, and by me, beings I mean everything from the consciousness that is in every cell, to every plant, every human, um, every elemental, every rock, all of the beings that have ever been on this planet Earth within this creation, when you compare it to all the entities that are out in all of this, it's a very, very, very tiny amount of entities that are on planet Earth, okay? So, in other words, it is very easy for you to come, you starseeds, to come into this planet Earth in this creation and not recognize anyone as being a close friend from out here. Does that make sense? Right? Everybody outside of this creation, in all of these creations, well, let's say, 95 to 98% of them. In most cases, we all are connected to source. We're not in amnesia. We all know each other. I know that's hard to believe after what I just said about how many entities there are, but it is still true because of the way that we operate connected to source. So although you will recognize everyone, starseeds will recognize everyone, it is very, very slim chance that you will actually be on this planet with anyone that you would consider um, a family type feel or a really good friend. What you will have and what I have found and what I've seen you guys have are people that you've hung out with frequently. Not necessarily ones that have spent a great deal of time with you in the creation that you consider home and the reason why you consider it home is because after trying a bunch of these creations or building your own, it's just a creation that you like to hang there a lot. And you may have people here on this planet that you have hung with in other creations, but probably not anyone that you would consider um, that you would consider that you spent time at home with. Because the reason why you came is because of your expertise. Your expertise is frequently derived from the place that you call home. It is, uh, the place that you call home is where you would have been over and over and over, so to speak, and developed this expertise. And when it came time for Earth to come out of the third dimension, there was a lot of, in 1945, and the call was made, to all of you guys that have your expertise because going down into the vibrations, and I'll show you that in a minute, was done a certain way. Then it was already understood that to get Gaia back up through the vibrations would happen the opposite way. So we already knew what it would take to get Earth back into 5D and beyond. And so we could easily, quickly, call for the expertise and have everyone show up within a few decades of time to be able to get the job done. Okay? So, when you die, if you're in this creation and you die, you go back out into this. Okay? You die and you, as a star seed, will go back out into this. More than likely, you will go back, you can go back out into, well, you can go anywhere. But more than likely after being here, if you were to, to die tomorrow, you would probably go out to either directly into source, all that is, very unlikely, but you could do it. Or you could go back into the void, all that is, and all, where 
everything is and nothing is all at once, which is kind of, it's a part of source, but it's kind of a separate area, so to speak. Or the most likely thing that you would do if you died tomorrow as a star seed is you would go from this creation out to one of these creations that you would consider home. Okay? Does that make sense? So when you die, you do not go to 5D. 5D is within this creation. It, this creation is not what you consider home. This is an area that you have not been to. You have more than likely been here less than 10 human lives in order to come and do this particular job. Ow! Stop hiding. I flip. Okay? So, as a star seed, you came from out here, another creation, where you had a certain expertise that these creations out here, when you ask me to describe them, are extremely difficult, if not impossible to describe, because the only perspective you have is human perspective. And these are well, well, well outside of that human perspective. So I have nothing to refer to, to explain where you came from. And um, you probably are the only one from your home area that came to do your job on planet Earth, that there are so many more beings out here than there are in this creation here. So uh, the chances of you finding somebody who you would feel like was truly family or friend, uh, well, friends you'll run into, but really, really tight family members from home, very, very unlikely. And when you die, you will go outside of this creation back into this out here, okay? Now we're gonna go into this, this creation. So, how that happened was, now let's do it this way. Here's the creator, who is a, what you would think of as just energy at this point right here. And the creator goes out into the void and says, okay, I'm going to come up with this idea. And this idea is I'm going to take the void and I'm going to divide it in half and form this dualistic creation. Thus the yin-yang thing. Dark, light, good, bad, all of that stuff. Now, what happened then is uh, the creator said, okay, once you got this started, and this is huge, 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 huge. And although it's huge, it's still just one tiny dot of infinite creation available. All of these infinite creations are games that you can play. Not only that, but you can create your own from scratch. Okay, so let's go back over here. So after this was divided into two, the creator said, okay, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on this side of the game, the light side of the game. And he went to find a friend, and he said, friend, I need a volunteer. I need somebody who will kind of keep an eye on this other side, what you would probably call dark, some people call bad, I don't consider either one of them good or bad. And this is the, the friend of the creators that volunteered begrudgingly to hold um, kind of the energy and keep an eye on the other side of this creation is who I have named Lucifer. If you don't like that name because of the obvious negative connotations, then make up another one. Um, what's the name, Stephanie, for a friend of, cre of the creator? Let's say the creator is Bob, <laughs> and the friend is Jim. Creator Bob, friend Jim. Now we get rid of all these ooh-ah-ooh ah, ooh, or negative names. So Bob 
is kind of keeping an eye. These guys work really well together because these are one. And then Bob starts dividing this into this. Now we've got this circle and this circle. So this is Bob's circle. And this is Jim's circle. And Bob starts dividing this in half. And then that in half. And then this in half. Half, 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 half. Half, 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 half. And that's what I think they call fractaling. And this part is very, very, very complicated. And Jim is fractaling over here, too. And there's always a fractal over here on this side that matches a fractal over here. Right? So as this happens, and then we're going to go down, 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 and we're going to take it all the way down. This takes a oh, bunch of time, bunch of work over a very, very long period of time. But now we're going to take just a section of this, which is huge, and we're going to take it down to the area that is involved with Gaia. So Gaia, oh, I don't know how to explain these. These guys are not separate, separate. These are always together and then within together, but within together. So it's more like, here's the big one. And then inside of that are both sides working in conjunction, like spiraling back and forth. Jim and, and Bob. Jim and Bob are fractaling within this opposite of one another, fractaling smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So the point was to see from here, we've got duality. Can How far down can we fractal and have uh, this duality together? How close could we get them? <clears throat> In the process, it went all the way down to Gaia. Let's, let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's go to fourth dimension. So 4D, there were, in this breaking down, breaking down, there are, um, it becomes like uh, planetary. Planetary. Uh, duality. So there, there will be a planet on this side that is light and on this side that's dark, opposite of what I just said. And they will be, <laughs> and there will be, um, you know, countering each other. In 4D also, there are universes that are the same way, dark, light. And it actually went, uh, first it went, well, the biggest thing that you would understand would be multiverses, dark, and light. Then it went to universes, dark and light. Then it went to solar systems, system, dark. I'm not sure why I'm drawing these little circles, but solar systems. Then it went to planets. Well, the point of this was visual aids. Yeah, I guess. Planets that were light and dark. And like I said, these were yin yang type things you know so it as it fractaled down to get smaller and smaller and smaller to see how small a space this dualistic energies could be separate but yet close to each other so it became closer and closer and closer from the original this the giant creation out of the void all the way down to uh, up here, it was actually dimensions. So it was actually dimensions first, what I would call dimensions, whatever they want to call them. Then it was brought down into multiverses, and there was a dark multiverse, light, you know, that worked against each other, then universes, then solar systems, then planets. Then the ultimate was earth 
and that was having light and dark on one planet. But no, the Creator did not stop there, neither did all of the Creators, because by now there are just a ton of Creator gods co-creating with the Creator Bob, the Creator, original Creator Bob, and his friend Jim that started the whole shebang. So now we're on Earth, and they go, well, let's see if we can go even further. So they decided to try human beings on Earth. Well, before that was countries. Oh, yeah, that's true. She's right. There was countries and... Um, continents, right? Yeah, yeah, there would have been continents, then countries, mm -hmm. then um, towns. Cities. Yeah. Towns or cities. Uh, then there would have been families. Mm -hmm. And then, ultimately, humans. Just the human, individual human being. In the individual human being, the question was, and what they found all the way through there, that, and the question was, could you, like Source, Source has both sides intermingled. The question is, can you keep these two sides separate and can you get them in balance? Can you get them to stay in balance, um, stably? And so far down to this point, what was, what was identified is no, you cannot. And it, it was even found in humans. So let's do that now. So down into human beings. There is in every human being light and dark light and dark in every human being down into the lowest vibrations of what we call 3D it was identified by us as 3D somebody and I just copied it. and this is as low as we've been able to do so far Earth slash Gaia was as low a vibration in physical form human physical form with a conscious amnesiac <coughs> creator God, we took it as low as could be done at that time. Now, will Bob and Jim and all the creator gods that were involved in this be able to take it lower on some of these 3D planets that have been created since Gaia is done and moving out? Quite possibly. Nobody thought they'd get them even these low, this low. So, I'm sure that's what we gods do is continue to keep on trying to do uh, different things and what we haven't done before. So what we found out over there after all of this fractaling down and all of this seeing if you can divide all that is into these two sets of vibrations, can they be in all of these different arenas and can they be balanced and stable? And basically what was found was, no, they cannot. That it doesn't matter whether or not it is on a multiverse level or a human level, there will always be uh, light, we'll talk light and dark, light will always try to um, shine light on the dark and make the dark go away, and the dark will always try to bring darkness into the light. There's always this ongoing uh, struggle. Always. That's the fascinating part of this particular game. Okay. So that's what has been going on. So now you know that as, as a star seed, you are not from this creation at all. When I say creation, I mean Bob and Jim's creation. Bob then his friend Jim, you are not from here. You did not come and you weren't at the, the start of it. You weren't in it at all. You came when Earth... Don't you take that one? You were in it when Earth was down in 3D. 3D Earth. And she has come from... from uh, here, this place, where Bob took the void and divided it into two, 
Gaia was one of the entities that was over here in this gameplay. Actually, that's hard to explain. So just understand that she was in here. She moved all the way through, down through all of this fractaline to get to down through the multiverse, universe, solar system, planets, and Earth until she was here for X amount of space. But she's an entity too, and she does have a plan for herself, just like you have a plan for yourself. So at this point, she was ready to come back up out of all of this, back the opposite way, up through the void, back into source from here to source or to the void or to what she calls home and move on to her next creation or game. In about the 1940s was when she made her call for that you all heard where you came from all of these creations being the uh, experts at helping her get from here back out of the creation altogether. Now, some of you that answered the call were very good friends of Gaia, like me, like Stephanie, like some of you are, and some of you were not. Now, it's not that you don't know her, and we love, everybody loves everybody um, over in here, this area. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody loves everybody. But there is similarities in what we prefer that will cause us to be what you would call closer friends. So there are some beings that came here that are closer to Gaia, and there are some that aren't as close to Gaia. It's not really relevant. But everybody who came that's a starseed came to come and help Gaia go up through 3D into um, 5D. Right? Mm hmm Okay. So, you came in as starseeds. You came in into these little human bodies. You weren't really into the game. Your place that you consider home... Oh, that's me. What about it? Oh. Over out here... It is what I've identified and tried to explain to you is um, most of them are like five-star resort where all your dreams come true with, and they're very magical. That's how a lot of those creations are made. This creation that Bob started and Jim co-created and then all these other beings added, it is a creation for the extreme, like, the extreme entities, like extreme sport nuts, the ones that prefer challenges, the ones that prefer uh, things like climbing to the top of Mount Everest without oxygen, or just climbing to the top of Mount Everest. Because climbing to the top of Mount Everest is painful. It hurts. There's a good chance you could die in it. So why do people do it? They do it for the experience, for the excitement, for the uniqueness of it, because not very many people do it. That is the same reason that all the entities that have been playing this dualistic game came to play this dualistic game, that all you starseeds look around and go, this doesn't make any sense. Why would you come and, and live a life that is difficult and painful? The reason why is because on the other side, just like after um, after you've climbed Mount Everest and came down, there's that experience to relive forever. That is exactly what they do after they've lived this experience or more than likely millions of lifetimes worth of experience. When they're done, they're going to be able to say they climbed Mount Everest. The same thing could be true for having a baby. Uh, it is not comfortable to be pregnant. It is dangerous to give birth. It is a struggle to raise a child. So why do you do it? You do it for the experience of it. Because if you looked at it practically, 
practically it's a dumb move. It is truly a dumb move. The chances that you're going to mess it up as a parent are quite high in many regards. Um, any parent can tell you that they have uh, a lot of pain, of fear, of, of uh, trepidation, of just basically screwing it up in order to learn how to do it right. And even then you don't know how to do it. So why would you do it? It's the same thing. So if I could encourage you guys um, to look at it from that perspective, that is a part of not judging. If you'll stop judging what's going on here, pull back and look at it objectively as a game, as an experience, using those analogies of of climbing to the top of Mount Everest or jumping out of a helicopter at a snowboard and going down a mountainside or the list is, is endless. The <laughs> list is endless. So that's what they are doing here. So when you as a star seed, now that you know the story, and I've told you, when you realize that you're from these other creations where they're just as exciting, they're just not as extreme with the lower vibrations it's a different kind of creation like someone who paints a painting in their studio with air conditioning looking out their window from a cabin who's sitting on a mountainside painting the mountain in comfort versus somebody like michelangelo who's painting a painting big old ceiling painting on their back upside down that takes years do you get my drift you get my drift so when you guys come here and you haven't got any experience of this very complex never been done for for before thing with very low vibrations dealing with what you consider negative activities then if you can look at it from the analogy point of view, then, then you'll not judge the Michelangelo's because understanding that the Sistine Chapel that they are creating is magnificent and like nothing that's ever been done before. And your painting of the mountains from the comfort of your, your cabin, which is like these creations out here, per se, are beautiful and magnificent too, but they are just completely a different kind of magnificence than Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. Okay. So let's go back to the human being. So now you're in this human being, and 3D Earth is ready to go back up through the dimensions, as I have said, to 5D and beyond, although she is going to stick around 5D for a while. But because not in human land, but in vibrational land, to us that see it like that, 3D and 4D are really one area. Because to us, when we see it that way, it is really 4D, high, high 4D and below are what we would consider low vibrations, okay? And so what she's doing is she's going out of 3D, 4D, breaking through into 5D, getting rid of the lower vibrations of fear, despair, uh, anger, and a whole list of them that are along this line. Now, though, there will still be negative more negative vibrations in 5d because this is where we are here's 3d earth and it goes up and up and up to 4d earth up and up, 5D Earth, 6D Earth, 7, 8, 
9, 10. And depending upon how you divide it, really at about this point, nobody on Earth, nor does Earth, identify numbers anymore. Because at this point, you can step outside of time space. So there is no more separateness here, nor is there a numbering system. So this is what she is doing. This is where 5D Earth is. Still within this creation. Okay. So when you are, and what you are doing now, is if you are going towards 5D Earth, you have said, I am a star seed, and I have been in 3D Earth. I'm a star seed in human form. in human form and I've been in 3D Earth and I am going to zoom through 4D in this body and land in 5D Earth where although I am still in this Bob and Jim's creation I am going to land in a physical place that is like the one 3D, 4D Earth, except now Earth is Gaia, is vibrating higher, vibrating higher. So the range that you can stand on her is now down here, let's say it was 0 to 10. And then 4D was, say, 8 to 20. And 5D is like 18 to 100. Okay? So you're going to try to go from here, in human form, while you're alive, into 5D Gaia to live out your days. Okay? In 3D Earth... The approximate length of a life of a human being is 80 years on average. If you average all of the 4D average human life, it is about 150 years. In 5D Earth, halfway and below, it is about 250 years that a human being will live. From about halfway up, you can step outside of time space and you can live to, you can live here indefinitely. Uh, or those that want to live there, uh, that, that want to stay because there are planets all over the place in 5D. 5D is, Gaia is going to join a whole bunch of other universes and planets and stuff that are already in 5D. So at 5D, there are people or entities that live on those 5D planets out, that live in the now the whole time. There are ones that want to live aging so that they will live to be a thousand years old, usually no more than that, before they leave. And there are ones that will live significantly less, although not really very many that live that, that are living less than 100 years on 5D Earth. So this is what you've got to do as a human. So now you're a human on 3D planet Earth. Now, 3D Gaia is no more. Gaia is now 100% in 4D and 5D. Most of Gaia right now is in 5D. With only about 5 to... 10%, really less than 10%, still left in 4D. Most of you guys, most of humans on the planet are vibrating in 4D. And she's left her 5 to 10% throughout 4D to allow people to stay there until they get up to the 5D and join her up here. So your job is, now that you've assisted her 
to get out of 3D altogether. The ability now to step into 5D completely is at Gaia's discretion, which she can do any time now since the first when we all corrected the grid issue. So, in order to take yourself to 5D, you cannot kill yourself or die. Because a star seed who kills themselves and dies, unless they really do a lot of work, will automatically go outside of this creation back to Bob and Jim's creation. When you die, star seed, you will go outside of this creation altogether, this tiny dot, and go back out to where you consider home, or to another creation, or to the void, or back into source source or create your own new dot or you're going to stay in physical form it's either and you're going to go up and you're either going to stay in 4d or you're going to move to 5d if you decide that you want to or you end up staying in 4d individual body in 4D, then what will happen, depending upon your belief system, depending upon what you've decided to create, there are different timelines for infinite numbers of options, but these are the main ones. You could be a human or a starseed, there are a lot of long-term humans that will see this, that they believe in the end of the world. So as Gaia finally leaves that last percentage out of 4D, it will look like, it will look to these 4D humans like uh, the Rapture, Armageddon. Uh, they could very likely have the scenario where uh, an entity that looks like Jesus is floating down and, and the good guys float up to them, and then the bad guys are left on the planet as it burns, okay? Other people who believe that Gaia is going to blow up will, that are, that are going to stay in 4D, will either be convinced by the geckos to get on their spaceships or 